Hi everyone, welcome to UKPM Survival and Outdoors here on YouTube and in this latest UK Prepper Man video we will be discussing my EDC for 2021. Stay tuned. So EDC, everyday carry, possibly one of the most talked about subjects in all of prepping. And why? Maybe it's because there is so much choice out there. There's lots of items, guys, there's lots of cool stuff that you can buy to tailor your EDC personalize it to your own requirements and your own lifestyle. Now I consider my EDC to be true pocket carry. Yes I do carry a separate bag on a daily basis but if that bag was to get lost, stolen and damaged maybe those items would be then lost as well. So having the items on my person I think is a good thing. You did see previously I did a video called my near person EDC. A little bit different it was a pouch, it had some additional items in, but that is purely to support my existing pocket carry, and that pouch can be put into whatever bag or pack I'm using on that day. So, pocket carry, EDC. Mine has pretty much stayed fairly similar over the last few years. I found what's worked for me, and yes it has evolved, but only in terms of the quality of some of the items. The items have been improved over a period of time, and I've really managed to try and find things that work for myself. So I hope in this video it gives some inspiration to yourselves, if you're looking at creating an EDC, or maybe looking at improving what you are carrying. But remember, it's all about options and choices, there is no rights and wrongs with this. Like so many times, and so many times I've said it on the videos, it is about options and choices rather than rights, wrongs, have to do this, don't need to do that. So make your EDC yours and without further ado I'll show you what's mine. Here is my EDC all laid out. I've got a few different options so I can switch between items as I, uh, as I wish depending on what I'm doing. But my watches, I've got three to choose from. This one's pretty much my everyday carry watch of choice. It is the Citizen Eco Drive. It's nice because it's 200 meters water resistance and being Eco Drive it means never have to put battery into it, it's solar powered, so all good. Nice size, I've got the stainless steel bracelet on, and these are really good, it came with a five year guarantee and I can upgrade it to a six year guarantee just by registering it online. So it's a nice watch, not overly expensive. Sometimes I do switch between that and this one, which you've seen before, it's the Pulsar Chronograph. Nice watch, sentimental value because it was a present, so I've hung on to it. It's got the leather strap as well, being battery powered, it means that the water resistance isn't going to be maintained. But having said it, I've had it, uh, the battery in here for about two years and it's still keeping good time. So just another nice option. It's worth mentioning that having ones that are analog watches as opposed to digital mean that you can use them as a navigational aid. So if you lose your way, you can use the sun to navigate your way around, a bit like a compass. Of course, I do still have a digital watch and for toughness, I don't think you can beat the G-Shock. They run sort of from around about 80 to 90 pounds upwards um, as much as five six seven hundred pounds for some of them but uh, this one is a pretty much uh, general one it has uh, the multiband six feature which means that every 24 hours it receives a signal a radio signal so it can set the time 102 this morning it did just that and it keeps good time it's also 200 meters water resistant these things are pretty much uh, bulletproof in some respects because uh, they are tough. The only thing I don't like about them is I really don't like the plastic strap. I'm not a big fan of plastic strap watches but it is what it is. It's another option to have and certainly for camping and for toughness it is uh, pretty good to have. Now wallets, my pretty much everyday carry wallet is um, this one. It's made by a company called Ogon Designs. It was a present some time ago but if you search the name you'll probably find that uh, you can get different finishes now so there's lots available um, can't remember where I saw it so just go online and search for it and uh, check them out yourself but uh, this is a card holder style wallet I've just taken them out for the purposes of this film but typically I'd carry ID, driving license, credit cards, bank cards so on and so forth and I do carry a bit of cash with me we're not yet in a cashless society and there have been occasions certainly even more so in recent times where there's been issues with ATMs not working um, so yeah definitely worthwhile keeping a bit of cash and it's also RFID protected so the bad guys can't skim the cards so that's my uh, little EDC wallet sometimes I will switch out to a choice of two other ones one of which is this one which is made by Life Venture 
it's got the water resistant zippers on there, little pocket on the outside and inside it has spaces for credit cards, debit cards, cash and again the important RFID blocking. It's a nice little leisure wallet to have and a bit of an option to switch to sometimes. If I'm going travelling or anything like that, got more storage space but the trade-off for that is it bulks out quite a lot and you really can end up packing these things so they are very very bulky. They won't fit into uh, a suit jacket pocket very well but they will fit into a combat trouser side thigh pocket so yeah they are good. Got a few marks on it here and there but uh, it's made out of uh, Kajura so pretty tough. Got good zips on there, paracord pulls and of course the RFID block so that's the Tasmanian Tiger wallet and sometimes I will switch out between these two and that one there. So according to what I'm doing it's nice to have the uh, the options. All right? Mobile phones, we all carry mobile phones. I only carry one phone, not three, but uh, this one is the Motorola G7 Power. I upgraded to this one some time ago because it has a really good battery life on it. It is a 5000 milliamp capacity battery. As a rule of thumb, the more apps you use and the more times you're on 4G, the greater the drain on the battery. So having good battery life is uh, pretty much essential. I have it in an Elixir case with the carbon fibre look finish and a tempered screen uh, protector as well to protect the screen from any uh, damage. Now if you go onto the link below, I've put a link at the bottom in the description, my near person EDC, I keep the charger and cables and everything else to go with this along with the power bank so I can recharge it when I'm out, but it's pretty good and it certainly lasts a few hours with that battery capacity. Keys, I've been using the key bar for quite some time now and uh, this one is the copper one, it's pretty heavy and again not exactly cheap but they will pretty much last a lifetime I'm guessing and it keeps some of the keys together and uh, stops them from jangling around but there's a few keys that don't fit so I've just got them um, hung off here and I've just put a bit of tape around them again for the purposes of this video but the key ring on here is a free key and it's got the feature there that you can press it and open it opens up so you can put the keys on and off a little bit easier rather than these split rings which are always a bit of a fiddle to do so it's just a nice little uh, feature. I keep on here my one of my original EDC items the Phoenix EO5 torch 85 lumens of brightness and one AAA battery so an excellent excellent EDC item. It's getting a bit bruised and battered um, but hey it's still going so it just sits on the key ring and it's nice to have that as a, as a bit of a backup. My car keys I keep separate attached to the key bar via the magnet. I really don't want this weight hanging off my ignition because it will snap the key or wear the barrel out but I've got my car key there as well and I've got my little rescue me seat belt cutter and window punch so when I'm driving I'll just detach it from the, uh, the key ring and then reattach it afterwards and yeah the magnets on here are pretty good pretty strong so that's my keys that's my key bar I don't really have much more on on there anymore I used to keep quite a big key ring some time ago but I've sort of moved things about a bit and that's what I mean about evolving your EDC it's what works now I have that as a little backup uh, carry flashlight or torch but my EDC flashlight of choice now is this one made by Olight. It is the Olight Baton Pro. I've had it for a good few uh, as I say years now. I think I've probably had it for about 12 months. Feels like longer because I think this, this thing's really grown on me and it's a rechargeable one which I wasn't sure of at first because I've always been you know for double AA, A triple A batteries but for EDC it's brilliant and again in my near person EDC I keep the docking station for this. It's got a few marks on it here and there because it uh, has uh, made contact with uh, the ground a few times but it just goes to show how tough these things are. It's got the pocket clip on there as well and uh, it's up to 2000 uh, lumen with the strobe on as well so just the right size as well and uh, yeah like it. Um, will I get any more Olight uh, torches? Yeah probably because uh, I think the quality is pretty good and uh, the prices are, are fair as well so there's lots to, lots to choose from so yeah Check out, check out Olight and uh, you know, hopefully you find one that uh, you like. This one was uh, a 
special edition at the time. I did a review about this some time ago, so check back on the uh, the videos, and I'll probably put a link below when I first got this. But yeah, it's very bright. It's got the different modes on and everything. Now I keep some medication with me. I do suffer with asthma, so I've got a preventer and a reliever inhaler, which I keep on the person at all times. And I'm one of these people who doesn't like to be anywhere without a pen. And my pen of choice is the Parker Jotta ballpoint pen. It's got the metal tip on there as well, so hey, you could say it's a dual purpose item, but uh, it's a good writer and it's important, I think, to have a method of uh, making notes. I just don't like using other people's pens. Um, lighter. Now, I keep with me Zippo Lighter, and uh, I've had this one for some time. I've put a couple of Ranger bands around it, and the reason being, it's not my idea, it's been done by so many people now, but the the, the reasoning behind it is that these will evaporate and they will evaporate the fuel. So having some range of bands, which is basically bicycle in a tube round, means that uh, the fuel won't evaporate as fast. Um, can also be used as uh, additional fire making kit because uh, this will hold a flame for a bit, which is good. And again, I keep spares in my near person EDC. Um, wicks and flints and uh, bits and bobs but it's always a good idea to have a uh, the ability to make a fire when you need to so I have that and it goes nicely with the other three items here the uh, pocket tissues the hand gel and the lip balm now pocket tissues again obvious uses but combined with the lighter hand gel and the lip balm makes a nice fire kit. You've got your tinder, you've got your accelerant because that has al alcohol in and that has petroleum in as well so um, you've got the accelerant there and of course you've got the the lighter there to provide you with the uh, the flame. So a little bit of a, again a dual purpose there with having a fire kit. Um, masks, this is just an example. I did do videos about this before and I'm not going to go into the the pros and the cons about everything but uh, this one is an FFP3 rated mask you can see this one's in the packet I do use um, other options as well but uh, hey we've got to wear face coverings here in the UK and there's countless other uses for these as well so face mask is just part of my EDC and then we come on to my Swiss Army knife now I've had this one for the best part of 20 years it's probably one of my oldest pieces of everyday carry. It just seems to keep going. It's such a, a nice piece of uh, kit and you really can find one to, to suit your budget and your needs. I've had it for so long but I've still not managed to lose the, the toothpick and the, the tweezers. But it's got a blade on there which is UK legal because it doesn't lock. It's on a slip joint and it's pretty razor sharp as well. Uh, keep it nice and sharp as you can see. It's got a few marks on it because it is used countless times in a day it's got all the features on there as well which is good but they are really nice and i think if i come to upgrade there's absolutely loads of choice out there to find ones with the the right things on i just can't remember what the model is of that one it's not the hiker i know that but uh, i don't know but swiss army knives always good to have and then you can see on here i've got a multi-tool now this one isn't technically EDC because I don't carry it every day but I carry it when I can. It's a Leatherman and uh, I did a video about this one as well some time ago. It's the Leatherman Charge and uh, it's the later one the Charge Plus so it's uh, a pretty much premium multi-tool. Again these really aren't cheap but you're not going to buy one a week. So it's a good investment to have but you've got the, the pliers on there as well and loads of other things. I've got the bit kit in my near person EDC pouch. The downside to it is that the blade locks and therefore it's not EDC legal, um, it's not UK legal carry and I can't carry it on a daily basis without good reason. However there are occasions where you can have good reason to carry it so before you do carry one make sure that you're following the letter of the law and yes, I know our friends across the pond will probably be laughing because uh, we do have some strange knife laws here in the UK. But the law's the law, and you don't want to get yourself into uh, to trouble. But having a multi-tool 
it's certainly a good idea to carry. My choice is the Leatherman Charge Plus. So there we have it, that is my EDC for 2021. And yes, some of the items have changed, but I think the principles have remained pretty much the same. And it's, yes, that is what it's about, principles. There is no rights or wrongs, just options and choices. So I hope it's giving you some inspiration if you're looking at putting together an EDC kit yourself, or maybe improving what you already have. Anyway, remember, you can of course follow me on Instagram, where you'll see regular updates and additional channel related content and if you've enjoyed this video then hopefully you'll enjoy the other videos as well if you have enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel and any comments love to hear them until next time thanks for watching bye for now